Thank you all very much. How are you guys doing? Good. Thank you to Doug, Phil, and the rest of the team for uh, today and all the effort that you guys have put into it, especially that good lunch. I know that uh, being the first session after lunch, I'll probably have some of you take a sleep, take a small nap, and I'm okay with that. I will not be offended. I just ask, please keep the snoring to a minimum so that your neighbor can listen, okay? Um, all right, so as Phil mentioned, my name is Josh Brower. Um, I've been in IT since my teens. I've been doing uh, InfoSec for the last 10 years uh, with a focus on endpoint detection uh, as well as network detection. And we're going to be talking about integrating OS Query into Security Onion. Has anybody heard of OS Query before this session? Quite a few. All right. How many people are actively using OS Query in your organization? <laughs> okay. So I don't think I even saw one hand. So this is a great opportunity, right? Okay, very good. So in the last few years, I've spent uh, quite a bit of time focusing on getting a visibility to my in, into my endpoints. Um, I've really struggled with, as I'm sure you have, with uh, network traffic continuing to be encrypted, as well as uh, remote workers, right? We just have, for the people I work with, we have a lot of remote workers. And it's very difficult to get that visibility into the network, both for the encryption side of things and the remote workers. And so that's where the last couple of years I've been working through integrating OS Query, getting OS Query onto our endpoints, and finding a way to integrate that with the network data that we have. And so OS Query is a Facebook project. There we go. OS Query is an open source uh, Facebook project put out in 2014. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if you can't tell from the name, it allows you to query your system as if it's a relational database. Okay. So you can use SQL syntax. You can say, if you want to see all the users on the system, you can say select star from user semicolon. You hit enter, and you get all the users back, as well as metadata about those users. It's also cross-platform. Let me see if I can switch this. All right. It's cross-platform. Uh, it has wide support on Linux, uh, the BSDs, Mac OS, and Windows. And the last two I want to talk about together, performant and read-only. This is really important, especially for those of us uh, in organizations where infrastructure and operations uh, are not happy with putting yet another agent on the system, right? Um, how can we convince our operations teams to, hey, can I throw another agent on our mission-critical systems? OS Query was built from the ground up to be high performance. It was built to be run in production on critical systems. It's also read-only in core, which means that it's not going to make state changes to your systems. So you can be assured, your operations team can be assured that uh, you and your secured tools are not going to be making unauthorized changes to your critical systems, especially in production. Is that making sense so far? Is that sounding pretty good? Somewhat? Yes? Yes? All right. Yes, I heard the yes. Thank you. So what does this look like in a practical situation? Let's talk about a recent uh, incident, a recent issue. I think this was about six weeks ago. Anybody remember this? Anybody saw this? OK, so this was a, uh, this was about six weeks ago, the Mega Chrome extension, which has about 2 million active users. The latest version was compromised, and it was sending your credentials uh, to Amazon uh, for Amazon, GitHub, Google, and Microsoft to the perpetrator. All right, not, not a good thing, right? So if we are in security for an organization, how can we verify that our users, nobody, especially our IT people, have not installed this Chrome extension and is now siphoning off our user credentials? Well, what we can do is first look at what tables are available for OS Query to query. As I mentioned, OS Query allows you to query tables or um, different specific uh, instances on your, um, on your system. And these tables cover different areas. So you have the users table. You could have, um, in some cases, we'll talk about the processes table. Um, you have the cron jobs. You have all sorts of different uh, tables that you can query. And so there are 220 plus tables. They're added, the more are added on a regular basis. And you can find what you can query on the website, osquery.io slash schema. There is a lot, a lot of information there. You can filter it by platform as well as version number for OS Query. Fortunately for us, there is a Chrome extensions table, 
across all platforms. You can see uh, a little bit, not sure how well you can see that. You can see the schema. We have Chrome underscore underscore extensions. We have the schema right over here, the different columns. And then we have platform support on the far upper right hand corner. We have Mac OS, Linux, Windows, and the BSDs. So to write the query, we're going to say uh, just very, uh, very quickly, select the user ID, the name column, the identifier column from Chrome underscore, underscore extensions, and it's going to give us this result. It's going to give us all of the extensions on the system. The user ID is on the far left-hand side, the name of the extension, the version number, and the identifier. Now, for Chrome extensions, each Chrome extension has a unique identifier. You can easily find the identifier by going to the Chrome extension store uh, online, and you can look up that extension. Within the URL, you will find that unique identifier. That's what all of these identifiers are, so very easily to find. So this is great, but uh, if we're doing this across our entire organization, we have thousands and thousands of rows returned, it's going to be very difficult for us to find the mega extension in this, right? So next up, we're going to filter specifically for the mega extension. That's going to look like, we're going to have that select phrase up there, select user ID name identifier from the Chrome extensions table. Now we're going to filter, we're going to say where the identifier equals, that's a mega extension identifier, and the version number is 339.4, okay? So we're specifically looking for the, uh, the version that has been compromised on the system. I also have that version uh, filter struck out because in a scenario like this, you'll, run a, you'll want to run a couple different queries. You'll want to see, first of all, if there is a compromised version installed, for sure. But you'll also want to back out and say, does anybody in my organization have this extension installed, no matter the version? Because if that version, if that compromised version is still live on the extension store, it's very likely that our users, uh, the, the, the plugin will update and it will go out and get that um, compromised version. So we want to see if there's anybody at all running the Chrome extension for Mega. All right? So that is going to give us one result on this, in this particular instance. And the user ID is 501, and we see the identifier, the name of Mega, and the version number. Now, there are certainly a lot of other columns for, this, uh, for the Chrome extensions table. We're only just querying these uh, for our purposes. Now, um, up to this point, we found something, but uh, with this specific query, we're not actually going to get all of the users on the system. Let's say you're querying a Windows Terminal server and you have a bunch of local users um, or domain profiles on that box. Uh, this query will only get the current user, not um, all of the users. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to join the Chrome extensions table with the users table. And that will enumerate through all the different users on the box and it will give us a nice byproduct of changing out that user ID to the username, okay? So let's go ahead and do that now. We have modified that top portion. We say select the users.username, Chrome extensions.name, Chrome extensions.version. From the users table, cross join Chrome extensions using the user ID column, okay? That is a common column between the two tables. Now, if you're not familiar with SQL syntax, this definitely might not make any sense to you, and that is completely fine. That's actually what I think is one of the big benefits of using OS Query. There isn't some esoteric language that you need to learn and understand to query and use OS Query. You can use standard SQL syntax, and there are plenty of great free or low-cost training out there for SQL, okay? So this would be pretty easy to get um, up to speed on how to run these queries. Now, if you are a query guru and you're wondering why we're using a cross join there instead of a different kind of join, there is some issues with the Chrome extensions table. This gives us more consistent results, which is why we're using the cross join, just as a side note there. So this is going to give us the final result to users, Dresden and Everett. So it's converted that user ID to the, um, to the username, and the name of the extension is mega and the version number, okay? Is that somewhat making sense? We're using OS Query to query the state of our system. Thank you for that thumbs up. Appreciate it. All right, from here, it's kind of cool when you think about, okay, Josh, you're doing this on a single system, doing it on maybe a terminal server. You see all the uh, users on the system. 
Now let's do this at scale. Let's do this across our entire organization and all of our endpoints. Let's see what that looks like. So from a distributed perspective, we're going to run a couple different types of queries. We're going to have OSquare installed on all of our endpoints. We can run an ad hoc query, which is exactly what we just saw. We, we have an issue. We want to see if the Chrome extension is installed. We want to see if, uh, if there is anything relevant in the Etsy host file. We can run those queries ad hoc across your entire infrastructure. There's also sch scheduled queries. Scheduled queries allow us to say, run these sets of queries every 180 seconds for these sets of hosts, and then send me the results. And there's a couple different uh, ways of logging those scheduled queries. You could do snapshots, or you could do differential. With differential, you could say, um, like, you know, select star from the user's table. Once you've gotten all that initial user's data, then any time a new user is added to the system, it's only going to give you, under a differential query, it's only going to give you that new user that's been added. So you're not getting back all of the users on the system every time you're running that query. OK? And so let's look at this from a technical perspective. We have our endpoints. We have OS query installed on them. We need a fleet manager. We need some way to manage these clients, right? And so there's a bunch of options out there for OS query, both commercial and open source. The one you'll see that we're going to demo in just a minute is from Collide. It's called Fleet. Um, and we, so we have a Fleet server installed. That is the one that is sending, it's managing all of these hosts out there for OS Query. It's communicating with them. It's saying, run these scheduled queries every so often, send the results back to me. OK? So that is the Fleet Manager there in the center. From there, we're going to go ahead and send all of that data that Fleet has gathered. We'll send that over to Security Onion. We'll use FileBeat on the Fleet server, and we'll uh, send that data over to Security Onion using Logstash. All right? And from there, let's see what kind of integrations we can do, right? Because we have the host side of data, we have a lot of network data in Security Onion. What can we do if we bring these two together? This is where the demo comes in. And I've actually already had issues with the demo twice today. Um, so it doesn't bode well. If this does not work, I do have a recording um, that we can run. So can somebody please sacrifice a chicken or something? Make sure we, uh, we do this right. Thank you. Thank you. That was the previous issue. Come on. Yep. Yeah, so this, uh, unfortunately, my um, hard drive got disconnected in the middle of everything running about 15 minutes ago, and so everything crashed. So well, I'm going to run the video for you. Um, it'll be a short video. I may pause it back and forth and talk about it. Um, so let's try the video, and hopefully that will work. Don't mind the wizard behind the curtain. Make sure audio works. All right, so as you can see, we are running uh, Fire Fleet. Uh, we just talked about that a minute ago. We have a couple of systems in the world. Everybody hear that okay? Yeah. All right. Query these in just a couple of minutes. If we go over to the Security Onion uh, dashboard, the overview. When you think about how a security uh, analyst uses uh, Security Onion and how they might look at OS query logs, there's a couple different workflows. The first one is uh, starting with OS query data um, and looking through it. And if they see something that they want more context on, they pivot from the OS query data to the other data that OS or that uh, Security Onion provides. The other workflow is the opposite, is starting with other data, like a network, like a NIDS alert, and then pivoting to the OS query data. So we're going to look at um, both scenarios or both workflows. Uh, let's start out with the first one, though. If you scroll down, um, there is an OS query dashboard. And this gives us um, an overview of the OS query data in our system. You can see we have um, an overview of how many changes across how many systems. If we have alerts, we'd see them here and in this box right here. Um, and then we do have changes by system. 
Uh, there's our Windows 10 system and the Ubuntu system. Then we have more detail changes right over here. Uh, this is the host name and the change type. The change type is essentially what queries generated the data. Um, without going getting into a lot of detail, um, we basically package up queries into packs and then deploy them to specific hosts. And so here we have um, uh, queries called Windows Tasks. So that's scheduled tasks, users, listening ports, Chrome extensions, startup items, um, again, users again. So lots of different uh, queries that we have scheduled. Um, and uh, let's see, we also can select a system to get a little bit more granular on it. That will filter it uh, for the all the OS query logs down here, as well as alerts if there were any alerts. You can also look at the change type, which we just mentioned. Um, so now we can filter for a specific change type. Speaking of filtering, let's talk about the filters up here to the left-hand side. There's a servers only filter. When you think about uh, the data that you're getting from your endpoints, you're gonna have different categories of systems. You're gonna have your clients, potentially laptops, desktops, servers, um, and you'll probably want a filter of some kind so that when you're looking at your O square data, you're not just uh, looking at um, broad, you know, a bunch of different categories together. So this filter allows us to uh, look at just the servers, which we see right here. There's also a not initial uh, queries or systems. What this means is that um, as you bring new systems online or you deploy new queries, um, you want to make a distinction as an analyst between the initial data, which we could call the baseline, and then any changes to that baseline. And so when we use this filter, that is filtering out all of that baseline data, all that data that was initially sent uh, for the query or the new system. Okay. And then let's scroll down here and we can look at the actual raw logs. If we dive into this one, um, actually let's find a, um, a services one. Um, we can look at the more specific information about the service. Um, what was the display name? Um, what was the name, the path, the user account? Um, so within each of these, there is a ton more information related to the query that was run. And as you can imagine, you could take a bunch of these queries and build specific dashboards off of them. So you could build a Chrome extension dashboard, which will display different metadata about the Chrome extensions you have installed. And uh, it'll give you a bit more of a, an ability to deep dive into that type of data. We just pause it real quick. As I mentioned, one of the things I don't really go into a lot of detail in the video is um, there is a ton of data um, that is in those raw logs from OSQuery. And so uh, what I've done personally, and I don't have it shown here, is that I've built dashboards around a lot of the different queries that we run. So Chrome extensions, um, here are the names, um, here are the users. Uh, we haven't seen this Chrome extension before. Um, here's metadata about that Chrome extension. What are the permissions that that Chrome extension looks for or is asking for? And so right here, you're just seeing an overview, but really you would be looking to build out some more detailed dashboards to do a bit more looking into the data. Uh, next up, um, we see that there is a live query link here. Uh, what this does is uh, if we want to go ahead, um, we see a log here that's interesting. We want to live query the system. You can click it and um, it's going to bring us over. It does, it actually goes to a, uh, a helper PHP script, which does a couple things and then directs over to Clyde Fleet and selects the system that you want to query. So we see that the system is online. So let's go ahead and query it. We say select star from say users and hit run, maximize it. And we can see all the users. We can also do some filtering up here and uh, look a bit more um, into it. Okay. So that's the live query pivot. Um, and then also uh, if we want to pivot to the other types of data for this system that, uh, that uh, Security Onion has, we can click on the indicator link and that's just going to bring us up to the indicator page. 
um, which gives us all the other types of um, data that Security Onion has for this particular system. Okay, so that was the uh, that was the first workflow starting with O Square data and then um, looking at it and pivoting to other types of data. Let's go from the opposite direction. Let's look at um, pivoting or let's let's start with like a NIDS alert and then that brings you up to the indicators page. Yep, this is what we want right here. So let's say you have so my what I'm trying to show here is that we are looking at the other analyst workflow where I'm looking at a NIDS alert and um, there's something that I'm running down from there and then I pivot to the OS query data from there. Uh, you are investigating a NIDS alert. This brings you up to the, um, the page for the Linux server, which is this guy right here. And as you're scrolling down, you can see that there are OS query uh, logs that on the system. If you scroll down all the way down, there is an OS query section uh, on the indicators page. This uh, gives you um, the changes on the system during this time period. So um, users, Linux cron jobs, listening ports, obviously we can filter for that as well. And if we filter for that, it's gonna give us the, um, the specific logs. We can dive into the logs from here as well. And then there's also um, network connections. For this particular system, we have network connections from OS Query. Uh, right now, we see that uh, if we scroll down, we have, um, uh, let's see, there was a connection outbound um, to this IP address on port 80 from this binary, from that process, okay? And this is done um, by a special table for OS Query. I haven't mentioned them yet. Uh, you may have been thinking up to this point that OS Query sounds pretty neat, um, but what about state changes that happen to a system um, in between the time when you do a query, right? So if you're saying, uh, let's say network connections or processes, for network connections, if you say, um, you know, select star from network connections table every 30 seconds, um, if there's a short-lived network connection, uh, which is very possible within that 30-second time frame, you're, gonna, you're not going to pick that up, right? That's where evented tables come into play. Evented tables are a special type of OSQUARE table that allows you to capture all the events from a specific system or subsystem on the endpoint. So in this case, network connections, once we set up the event to table, the socket underscore events table for the Linux server, it's going to capture all the different network events uh, that are happening on the system. And then you can query that table just like any other query, which is what we've done here. Um, and it's going, to, it's going to store the network connections in a file um, on a database uh, on the system until you have uh, selected and pulled those records out. And then eventually they expire off of the box, okay? And so um, as you can imagine, so evented tables, which I just mentioned, um, are pretty big for OS Query. It allows you to capture that data that otherwise um, you would lose in between those queries that you make. That's how they implement file integrity monitoring, as well as process auditing, um, network connections. There's also, you can ship um, event logs, sys logs, um, all that with OS Query. Um, so there's quite a few different, I think there's 14 different evented tables across the different platforms. There is quite a bit of, this could generate a ton of different logs, and so you'd want to be cautious of how you deployed it. But I wanted to at least show it to you because it gives you an idea of how we can, we can, we can, uh, because it gives you an idea of how we can tie um, the processes to the network connections um, together. Okay. So let's scroll back up. So that was uh, starting with other types of data. Oh, let me scroll back down. I forgot. We do still have that. Um, that live query link. So if you're, you want to go ahead and live query the system, you can click that link and you can live query the system from there. Okay. So those are the two different workflows starting with OS query data and then starting with other types of data. One last integration I wanted to show you, and this is definitely a proof of concept. Um, OS query has a very robust uh, extensions framework allows you to build extensions for OS Query. 
Now, uh, anything, um, any functionality that doesn't belong in core should be an extension. So uh, as we mentioned earlier, um, yeah, functionality that um, changes the system in what, some way um, should not be in core, it should be in an extension. And there's an extension that I'm going to demo for you. It's called, uh, it's done by Trail of Bits. It's an open source extension. It's called Firewall Control. Uh, it allows you to do insert queries that uh, you can basically control the endpoints firewall. You can uh, insert and delete, modify firewall rules using the built-in um, endpoints firewall. So uh, this works on Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. And the extension uses the native firewall of the system. All right, so let's take a look and see what this, uh, how we could use this. Right now, uh, I'm on the indicator page and I'm looking at this gmail.gobbledygook.rocks, okay? Let's say that uh, this, is a, um, this is a phishing site that you're investigating. Um, it's a campaign that's been targeted. Uh, it's an active campaign um, against your organization. Um, we can see that we already have had HTTP traffic outbound from our systems uh, to this domain. So if we scroll down um, and we find the HTTP sites um, visualization here, there's a column here that says OSQuery blacklist. All we can do is click on this and um, this just calls a small PHP script which uh, does a couple things and then runs the query which we can see right here. We said insert into the host blacklist, which is a table, um, and we're uh, inserting the domain name, gmail.gobbledygook.rocks. Um, this is the host that it was inserted on, and the insert is complete. Um, this, this domain has been blacklisted. Now, I forgot to actually start the ping. Um, this is the server that it was just blacklisted on, but you can see that when we try to ping, um, we actually get uh, replies back from localhost. This is because in addition to um, in addition to blacklisting the IP address in the local firewall, which is IP tables for this Linux server, it's also null routing the domain on the Etsy host file. Okay, so you have both the Etsy host file that's being modified and the native firewall to the system. This, um, at this point, this would allow us to make sure that all of our systems, whether they're on site or they are remotely working, we've been able to blacklist this phishing site um, that has an active campaign against us. All right. Okay. That was the integration. And thank you so much for putting up with a video of it. Um, unfortunately, um, thanks, Chris, for mentioning that I should record it. Uh, the demo didn't work out for you this, uh, this morning or this afternoon. But the video hopefully showed you a couple of the different things that you can do. The pivot links, um, specifically between starting with the OS query data and pivoting to um, a live query. Uh, there, was, there was actually a situation, um, this is a couple of weeks ago, where uh, we got a network alert for um, most likely it was a particular app that was installed and some adware with it. Um, and at this point, I didn't have the pivot link up and running but it would have been so much easier if I had just been able to be on that indicators page and just click on the pivot link, bam, select star from apps or whatever it was, and I could confirm right then and there within 60 seconds that that, that app was installed on the machine. And that's the goal, is trying to think through um, ways as I am working through the alerts and working with our team, what can we do to make that transition smoother between the network and the host data? Is that making sense? All right. So now that everybody's asleep after that video, we just have a couple more minutes. Um, there are a couple other ways that we could integrate OS Query. So Wazoo, which uh, uh, Security Union has recently integrated, does have support as a version 3.5 for OS Query. I believe that was just from a couple months ago. Um, however, it's in, it's in a very basic form and it's not clear exactly how much they're gonna integrate it further. Uh, I believe they're gonna try to do that live query um, so that you can run ad hoc and schedule queries through Wazoo um, across all of your hosts. And so that might be a way to do it, but I don't think they're going to do based on what they were saying in the Google group. I don't think they're going to be doing the fleet management portion of OS query. So you would still need some other way to manage your OS query fleet outside of Wazoo. 
There's also Bro, now I guess Zeek OS Query. Um, currently, Bro OS Query was released about six months ago. Um, it, it basically, you write Bro scripts to manage OS Query. So it becomes your OS Query fleet manager. And, and that allows for an even deeper integration than what we've seen here of the network and host aid. And I think that's a very interesting project to look at considering that uh, Security Onion has such deep support and integral support for Bro as well. So at this point, I think we are done. Um, just a couple things to note. Uh, last, um, last week with Chris Sanders and Applied Network Defense, I published a new online training called OSquery for Security Analysis. You can check it out at learnosquery.com. Um, on my blog, defensivedepth.com, there should have been a blog post that was automatically published. I think around this time, maybe around 2 p.m. That will have details on the integrations I posted as well as the slides for this talk. So if you go to defensivedepth.com, the very first blog post there will be the slides, the log stash configuration, and some of the other information um, that I referenced. That's about it. Any questions, comments, or snide remarks at this time? I'm okay with awkward silences. It's not a problem. <laughs> yes, yes. So I'll be at B-Sides tomorrow um, doing a 20, 25 minute presentation. What we'll be doing, uh, we'll be doing another demo. <laughs> but this time, um, it'll be a shorter demo and it will be specifically using OS Query uh, to do live interrogation. So we'll do some uh, we'll be doing hands-on interactive OS query. We'll be looking at process interrogation and how to look for a piece of malware on a Windows 10 system using OS query. So that's all. I don't even have a video recorded for that, so hopefully that goes well. We'll see. All right, yes. Yeah, I think I heard maybe part of that. I'm sorry. You're asking, um, are you asking about the performance hit of using something like this within SO? Okay. So the way, the, the only integration right now is um, I'm pushing the OS query logs from the fleet server, uh, which is in JSON format already. We're just pushing that using FileBeat over to log stash on Security Onion. And then from there, for the pivot links, um, there's just a very, very short PHP script that's just using the variable um, for the current, uh, the current search term that you have on the indicators page or whatever it may be. And that's just using it as a variable within a PHP script that I wrote that's hosted on Security Onion box that's redirecting it over to um, the fleet server. So there's no permissions. There's not a whole lot of integration from that perspective just some redirects um, as well as the, the logs being sent over. Hopefully that answered the question. Yes? Not too much surprisingly, um, because it's already in JSON format, um, we, I just had to do a, a, a couple different things, but I'm using the templates that they already have for, um, so the log stash uh, template I'm already using. So, um, I just, uh, I added a tag for OS query and I added the um, field event underscore type OS query and then SO brought in most of, most of the rest of it. So no, I did not have to do much um, log stash magic or anything like that to make it work, which was a big deal. Because <laughs> that can definitely get complex. And that is the log stash config is up on the, um, the site, but again, it's only like 10 lines, it's not much. All right, thank you all for your time, appreciate it.